Hello, everybody. It's Victor with Cardiac Wire, and today we'll be talking to Dr. Lee Mitsumori from Straw Benihoff Medical Center about his experience with PA medical and cardiac image post-processing. With that, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about how you got involved with PA? Oh, hi, Victor. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, so um, I was um, at the University of Washington as a resident and then a fellow. And during my fellowship, I got the chance to spend some time with um, Jeff Rubin at Stanford and got really interested into post-processing. So I spent time at their 3D post-processing lab, and I wanted to bring sort of that type of clinical service back to the University of Washington. Um, after my fellowship, I stayed on as, as a staff radiologist and then began, um, had an interest in cardiovascular imaging. So this was back in the early 2000s, which unfortunately really dates me, but so back then, the first thing we applied post-processing to was for um, aortic aneurysm endograft placements. And so with, with that start, um, we then got into cardiac imaging. And so that was kind of in the beginning days of cardiac MRI. And so my, myself and another colleague, we actually were the ones that kind of started cardiac MRI, cardiac CT at our institution. And... In the beginning, we had access to the vendor's post-processing software. So, you know, we, it was, you know, up to us to learn how to do the post-processing, what was appropriate. And it was, you know, it was a lot of fun, but it did take a lot of time. So, you know, in about a year or two, we did feel pretty comfortable with what we were doing at that time. And at a, as an academic institution, you know, our one of our uh, missions was to train our our residents and fellows. So back then, the residents and fellows and teaching them how to do post-processing was a big part of our, our educational mission and our clinical service. And But that did take a lot of time. So that was kind of how I initially was involved with post-processing and cardiac imaging. And later on, uh, several years later, I got introduced to PIA as... Um, a possible research partnership. And shortly thereafter, unfortunately, I, I had to, I left the university and I, I took a, a private practice position um, back home in my state of Hawaii. And so when I came back to my uh, new place of work, there was no cardiac imaging. So I would be the, you know, the, the only person to know how to do cardiac imaging. And I was excited to bring this clinical service to the new institution, and they didn't have any software, um, you know, cardiac post-processing software capabilities, you know, none of the techs, you know, how to do the imaging or the post-processing. So, it, you know, I, I began training techs how to do the exams. I spoke to our, our MR vendor on, you know, how to set up the sequences. And at that point, you know, we didn't have access to post-processing software. And so thanks to my introduction and um, affiliation with PIA, I was able to use their service to provide the post-processing for me and my new institution, you know, just as a startup. And it was really great. Um, so that's how that relationship began. And since then, you know, we've been very um, pleased with using their service um, to provide post-processing applications for our clinical service. Oh, so it sounds like your institution kind of has a full suite of cardiac imaging. I'm kind of curious more specifically about the types of situations that lead you into looking into outsourcing, kind of that brought you to that initial partnership with PIA. The main area that we did not have access to was the cardiac functional analysis, cardiac and flow analysis. And so that's where when we started cardiac imaging at my new site, uh, we would do the cardiac exams and then communicate with PIA, and then they would do the cardiac functional analysis for us. And so that's something that we wouldn't be able to do the clinical exam or provide a report without the um, post-processing service that PIA provided. Interesting. Well, what are the specific types of exams you typically send to PIA and kind of what's your thought process behind sending those? So in the beginning, it was all cardiac. So, you know, cardiac function, uh, infarct sizing, and flow analysis. And since that time, our structural heart service has really blossomed. So now we're doing, 
you know, we were probably doing 10 to 15 CTAs for TAVRs and uh, mitral valve replacements. And that was um, something that initially we tried to do ourselves, but it just took too much time. It was too complicated. And it would be very difficult for myself to train uh, one of our CT technologists to do the post-processing. And so that was something that PIA was offering at that time. So it's, you know, very easy for us to decide to use PIA services for that. So right now, most of or all of any cardiac MR post-processing needs, we will, you know, use PIA and the complex CT applications like TAVRs, the mitral valve replacements, and some of the, um, like, I know we're going to start doing, or we are doing Watchman CTs, and that's something that I'm doing personally now, and, you know, may decide to use PIA as well. Oh, and we also started um, CTFFR. So we started about a year and a half ago, and that was something that we were trying to decide how to provide that application. And fortunately for us, PIA started offering that service at that time. So we are also using PIA for CTFFR for coronary CT angiograms. Oh, that's really interesting stuff. And it's exciting to know that you're able to apply it to so many different imaging modalities. I was curious, you know, kind of when you get those reports back, how do you feel about the quality? Is it something that you trust? Yeah. So, you know, I've been very happy with our relationship with PIA. I think so say in the beginning, um, like our first tower case. So what we did was, so we looked up, you know, a reference, reliable references, came up with the type of measurements that we thought were appropriate, um, discussed this with our cardiology colleagues. And once we got a, agreed upon sort of format and what measurements we would want, we then discussed this with PIA and they were great. So they would say, oh yes, we can do these measurements for you. We can format it how you want. And then so then we started sending our studies to PIA. We'd get back to reports and it would kind of be in the numbers that we were expecting in the format that we were expecting. And so it was easy to transpose their report into sort of our voice recognition software. Interesting. So because it's so trustworthy, how does that outsourcing usually streamline your workflow and that of your technologists? Yeah, so it's been great. So so one, the technologists are free from any post-processing responsibilities. And for me and uh, the other colleagues that read these exams, so what we would do would, you know, we get the exam completed. Um, we'll ask our technologists to send the study over to PIA and alert PIA that the study is being sent and what type of study is. And then I would read the clinical part and all the qualitative, put that in my report, not sign it off yet. And then once the PIA results come back, then I would add the quantitative value. So for me, I'm not doing any post-processing. My technologists are not doing any post-processing. And I, will, it, I, I would say the downside would be the delay time be between when I start my report and when I sign off my report. And most of these studies are non-urgent. So I would you know, read the qualitative part say today and then look for the results tomorrow morning, add the results and sign it off tomorrow morning. So for me, it, it, it streamlined my workflow um, and it hasn't involved any additional, you know, FTEs or CT technologist time. So that's been great in terms of clinical efficiency. Wonderful. And so with all that time you save and the clinical efficiency, what are some of the benefits you've seen, you know, both in and out of practice? Main benefit I found is just the um, relationship with PIA. So one, you know, their technologists, are, their image analysts are doing hundreds of, of these types of post-processing. So I think I'm getting um, expertise that I probably would not have been able to do if I wanted to start my own lab. I know they're doing post-processing better than I could do myself. And they're very um, receptive to any questions um, there's been several times, like with the MR result, that I, it didn't make sense to me. And I would ask PIA, oh, you know, could you look into this value? It didn't seem to match what I was seeing on our clinical exam. And I get to talk to their medical director, and oftentimes he will find a problem. Like he would say, oh, maybe this sequence was performed not quite optimally, and that's why we're getting these results, or this is a spurious result, so, you know, it's probably not trustworthy. So that's been, you know, very tremendous um, support for me in terms of where I come up with situations that I'm not quite clear about and not comfortable reporting. And um, PIA has also been very great in terms of modifying um, reports or modifying post-processing. 
So whenever our clinicians have a question or you want to add a, a measurement, and it's been very easy to do, you just email PIA and say, hey, could you try doing this for us? And they said, you know, of course, they'll send us some examples back. And then once we agree upon things, then it gets added to our report. So that's been a, you know, a very, uh, very advantageous for me. Well, Dr. Mitsumori, thank you so much for all that background. It's really rewarding to hear that you and PA have such a good relationship and that it's helped benefit you and your patients so much. With that, I'm Victor. This is Cardiac Wire. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.